Today, I'm going to be showing you my progress and how I'm working with a Crepe de Sheen fabric along with this new look pattern in 6696 to create this super cute sundress for the summer months. Stay tuned, I'm about to break it all down. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you're returning. Either way, I am so glad that you're here. I'm Rachel Ann and welcome to Dine In Creativity where I hope that you'll sit, stay a while and join me on my sewing journey. I'll be sharing all things pattern and fabric reviews, whether I'm ordering fabric online or going to my local Joann's fabric store to sew up something with what they have. I made a video not too long ago about the gorgeous fabric that I got from Nude Fabrics. And so today I'm going to be working with this gorgeous Crepe de Sheen. I believe it was on sale for $10, $9.99 a yard. So I went ahead and scooped up two and a half yards of it. It's so drapey. Originally I was going to make a wrap dress, but I went to Joann's yesterday and they had a big sale. All their patterns were either $1.99 or $3.99. So I loaded up again and instead we'll be making this fully lined, super cute dress. At least I hope it turns out cute. I am making some minor modifications, basically going to be using the top of view B with the skirt of view A. I want to wear this to a work conference that I have coming up. If it's not too dressy, I may throw like a navy blue blazer on top of it. Um, but the top A, it looks so cute, but it would tie up in the back and I don't think it's really work appropriate for what I'm going for. So instead, I'm gonna mix and match these two. My little mannequin is naked, so I'm gonna go ahead and cover her up walk you guys on over to my patterns and show you what I've done so far. Okay, I have gone ahead and pre-cut out all of my pattern pieces that I'm going to need. I believe there are 10 pieces in total. I've actually decided not to use their interfacing pieces that they include because I'm gonna have to fully line this garment. It is see-through and I don't want that to happen for what I'm going to wear it for. So I am currently washing the fabric that I ran out and purchased today in a frenzy because I knew I wanted to get started on this dress and it is just a very thin, almost polyester silk material that I think is gonna be really pretty underneath this. Now I'm about to do the task of making the puzzle pieces all work together. And there are 10 pieces. The skirt is slightly long, but I am actually very short. So I am gonna cut off about six inches from what the original pattern dictates just to fit my height. Everything is lined up and ready to go. It looks like I have plenty of fabric with quite a bit even left over that I could probably make a cute top. The one thing that I did yesterday was really take some care and time to measure out where on my body I wanted this particular dress to hit. As you can see from the model picture, this hits just above her ankles. And I also want it right around that area, maybe even just a hair or two shorter. So what I did is go ahead and measure my body, very straightforward here, from my shoulder all the way down to where exactly I want this piece of fabric in this dress to fall. Now I had to account for the bodice of this dress. And so I measured from the bottom of the bodice to where on my body I actually want this dress to hit. And for me, it came to about 30 inches. I'm five feet, four inches. I don't think that that's gonna overwhelm my body to have all of this flowy fabric, but can you really ever have enough flowy fabric on an outfit? I don't think so, but either way, this is kind of what I'm gonna move towards and go for. I'm gonna get these pattern pieces pinned down so I can go ahead and cut them out. So I am actually using silk pens after sewing on very slippery fabric my first time. I quickly wised up to the fact that having certain pieces like silk pens can be very helpful in terms of, you know, not leaving large holes in the fabric and overall being gentler on the fabric. 
currently in moderate mayhem level. I have my lining fabric currently in the dryer right now. Anytime that I purchase fabric, I always pre-wash it on usually gentle and either warm or cold depending on the darkness or lightness of the fabric. And then I always throw everything into the dryer. So I think for today, I'll finish cutting out the pattern pieces on the skirt. And then I'm taking a breather. I feel like I just had a miniature full body workout <laughs> cutting out these pattern pieces. Couple quick helpful tips that I've learned along the way. So early on and new in my own sewing journey, Firstly, invest in a decent or really good pair of fabric cutting scissors. I didn't know that when I first started out and it really makes a huge difference. Eventually, I want to get the roller cutter when I have an appropriate workstation and set up. But for now, I'm working in my dining room. I totally taken it over. I think I got two pairs of these on sale for $30. They're called Fiskars, but I would highly recommend. I love them. This particular pattern does call for a 16 or 22 inch zipper. And I learned how to sew a zipper in by watching a video by Professor Pencushion. I am going to link her video in the description below. If you have held off on sewing in zippers into your garments, because you're nervous about it, like I originally was, the way that she explains it makes it so much easier to get a beautiful zipper look and get the zipper to work and function within your garment. I've got all of the pattern pieces cut out. I love Crepe de Chine fabric. This flows so beautifully, it's so drapey, but I can already tell that it is going to be extremely slippery to sew with. And if I'm already tongue-tied trying to say it, it's extremely slippery to sew with. It is also very difficult to work with. For me, at least, it can slip and slide all over the place. It's so different than cotton sateen or cotton canvas where you just set the fabric together and it sews up so beautifully, not with crepe de chine or really silky fabrics. There are going to probably be a lot of pins involved here, all that good stuff. If you happen to decide and check this fabric out from Mood, which I will make sure to link it in the description, but also right over here, is that it is very see-through. So as you can see, when it's laid up against my body, you can just completely see my shirt underneath it. And that's why it would certainly need a liner. I guess you could wear a slip with it, but I am really trying to create not a structured top, but a top that with a little bit more structure than what this very loose fabric offers. Although if you doubled up on it, potentially, I think you would also see the florals come through. Yeah. Literally, it, you can see right through it, but it would make such a gorgeous, even like a cowl top, as you can see. I mean, it's effortless. That drape is just so pretty. So I highly recommend this fabric. It just feels so soft and luxurious to the touch. New day, new outfit. To be honest, I've steadily been working on this beautiful piece behind me for the past several days. Let's see, I started working on it on Sunday. And today's Tuesday, I put in hours upon hours of work, not because the pattern itself, which is new look in 6696, is an overly complicated pattern, but because the seamstress likes to overcomplicate and take things into their own hands. I don't know if that resonates with you or if you can ever overcomplicate things like I do, but I've learned many different things about using this particular pattern and working with Crepe de Chine. I figured now is a great time to kind of do a progress status update because I did not film everything that I've been doing these past few days. So as I shared this pattern, very beautiful summer dress. Let me get that angle right. Love it, highly recommend. But of course, when I started sewing it, I decided that instead of having it be one solid dress, I wanted to make a two-piece set. The other 
thing that I decided to do with this garment. As I shared at the beginning of the video, this was a very thin crepe de chine. So I decided to do a full underlining. So what I've learned first piece is next time I'm just going to make a lining. I don't think I will ever underline a kind of silky fabric garment like this. Again, it does kind of change the flow of the garment. This is at this point, I just have scraps left. When I found the underlining fabric that I was going to use, I realized that it too was too see-through. I mean, it does nothing. So I doubled it and sewed it into the dress skirt bottom. It did resolve the issue. You can no longer fully see through the garment. I would feel very comfortable wearing this out and about, but the underlining being sewn into the dress in some ways did kind of change the shape of it. So you live and you learn. It was already so much work, so I'm definitely gonna leave it the way that it is. The other piece that I did, I'm gonna play a video as I try to explain this, is in underlining and working with this fabric, I did a method, I don't even know if it is a standard method, but I thought, let me try and make this a little bit easier for myself and take some shortcuts. So I actually sewed the two pieces of the underlining and the actual skirt fabric, the dress fabric itself together, left a hole in the bottom and then flipped it inside out and basically treated that sewed together garment as the piece of fabric. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I did here. So when I talk about treating each piece as the piece of fabric, this is what I mean. The garment was sewn fully together at this, and then at the sides, it created this really nice, clean finish. Although the amount of time and work it took to get it there was a bit excessive. That's what added on so much for me. The top, as you can see, is definitely still in progress. Let me paint it down a little bit. But the skirt, more or less, is almost done. Uh, it really, it has this nice little cute slit at the bottom of it. It is fully lined. The final thing that I'm thinking about doing, because the top also kind of had some issues, not from the pattern in my opinion, but from me. So I'm going to, I think, make a little nice, almost like a sewn on top belt to just really keep it clean and, and play around with some things. I figure I played around with this design so much as it is, I'm gonna keep it going. This actually may be something good for me to show you in terms of what I'm talking about, treating the lined fabric as one. This is the sleeve that I am going to work to sew on the dress today, but I ironed the edges to keep them really flat and literally did this to every single piece of this garment, the top, the dress, every panel of the skirt. As you can see, the skirt pattern calls for, I think it was 10 patterns by the time it was all said and done. 10 patterns, I mean 10 fabric panels but I lined each individual panel. Hopefully the next time I film this video, it will be the end of it. Sleeves attached, top finished, skirt finished, and I can't wait to reveal it. And more importantly, I can't wait to wear it. I don't wanna say I can't wait to be done with it because I have enjoyed this process, but as you may know watching, it can be a bit of a roller coaster. And then when you start making modifications, you realize, okay, maybe, this is why the pattern was meant to go together, but it's so fun to experiment and play around and create a garment that you'll end up wearing. This is one of those garments that I played around with last summer. It was one of my first self-drafted patterns. I worked on it so long and I could not be happier with the final product. So have fun with sewing and what you do. I guess that's my key point here.
I may not know what day it is, what time it is, just kidding, kind of, but this piece is officially done. The two-piece set is completed. I'm going to talk you through what worked, what didn't, some construction and fit issues, how I remedied them, all the above, so that hopefully you can learn from the mistakes that I made so that you don't have to go through that trial and error of recreating or reconfiguring in the same way that I did. As I shared at the beginning of this video, I made modifications on this new look in 6696 pattern. Instead of making this a one full dress, I decided to modify it because I'm extra when it comes to sewing. Apparently, I can't seem to follow directions and created a two piece set. Um, as you can see, this top does have a little bit of excess fabric and is a little bit baggy. By design, I like a looser fit when it comes to like a crepe de chine material, but I know that this probably could be more fitted. At this point, I'm not going to touch it because it has taken quite a bit of time to create this. I believe the final tally of the days I spent sewing was around six. Of course, that wasn't continuously for, you know, eight or 10 hours a day because I do have my day job that I must attend to, but it was for an hour, maybe a couple hours here and there. When I originally sewed up the top, I decided to finally size down in the pattern, but because I had underlined this entire top, I'm gonna get up close so you can see, as you can see, it has such a clean finish, which I do really enjoy and I was proud of myself for that. But because I decided to underline this entire outfit, which I'll talk about that in a second, it did add on an extensive amount of time, but also caused the sizing to get off. So what did I have to do? I had to sew a side panel in because the shirt was so skin tight, I couldn't even get it over my head. Or I could, but it was with quite a bit of force. And the reality of me doing that every time I wanted to wear this is just not gonna happen. I always talk about, I like to be able to throw things on and just go. And if this was so skin tight, I couldn't get over my head, I wasn't gonna wear it. So I did add the side panels in. Um, it is what it is, it's imperfect, but I'm, I'm gonna rock it, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna pan the camera down a little bit because I also need to show you the peplum. This peplum was a necessity. I ended up having to add it or else the original top would have been very, very short. And I wanna wear this to work. For the situations I wanna wear it to, having midriff may not work for me and what I'm going for. So I did add the peplum. The peplum is double lined. Now I said originally I got the two and a half yards of fabric. I was so excited. Oh, I can make a top out of the rest of this. Used the full two and a half yards. I have maybe 12 inches of it left by the time this was all said and done, but that's okay. I also had gotten five yards of the underlining fabric. It's all gone too. So I had to double underline it. I think I've already shared that, so I don't wanna to get too caught up in those details. But yeah, so I added the peplum. To me, this is a classic silhouette. This is the dress and top set we've seen so many times. So when it came to creating the separate skirt, I wanted to create durability to it. And so I went ahead and did sew in just the top little band around the skirt. And then I was going to sleep and it came to me this flashback of a skirt I had back in high school that I loved so much. It was kind of a slip skirt, but that skirt back in high school had a cute little tie on the side. This is the first ever hook and eye closure that I have ever sewn into a garment. I am very happy with it. It may seem small to many of you, especially if you're an experienced sewer, but for a new 
sewist or seamstress. To me, this was just kind of another hurdle that I crossed, you know, it's sewing in a zipper to a garment, then sewing in and drafting your own patterns. And, you know, there's all these little hallmarkers and, and milestones that can be really exciting when you achieve it. This was one of those garments that when originally I had finished it, I just was so burnt out from working on it for so many days, which I did absolutely step away several different times, which is helpful to regain a sense of perspective and direction, in my opinion. It's something that even my art teacher back in college would tell me is, sleep on it, take a break, then come back to it the next day with a fresh set of eyes and a good night's sleep and things may kind of clear up for you, which also can be helpful in life, I may add, just to take a step back when able and regain perspective. But that's a practice I certainly use when it comes to sewing. I overall, it's been several days since I finished it, since I've even looked at it. I'm excited, I'm happy, I know that it's not perfect. Would I underline a garment fully again? Possibly if it were a jacket or it really called for it, but when it comes to this drapey material, I do feel it would be best to create a lining and really have that flow. For me, I do like the fact that because this is a two-piece set, I can break up each piece and wear it separately. I can't wait to wear this skirt with a really cute top tucked in, maybe even a bodysuit, something that's kind of form-fitting, and then the skirt, because it has that nice A-line drape and flow to it, I think that would be super cute. But then also this top with, you know, black ankle skinny dress pants for work or something of that nature. So this is what I've got. Next time I am absolutely going to try a suggestion from one of my lovely viewers who shared that if you sew, you know, very silky fabric, which Crepe de Sheen is very silky, if you sew that on top of tissue paper, it can kind of help keep it all together. And so that is something that I definitely want to try. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. What has been your experience working with Crepe de Chine? How do you feel about modifying the patterns? This is something I continue to dip my toe in, so to speak, and really tailor clothing to the way I want it to look. Sometimes it doesn't exactly match the image in my mind, but that's okay. You can just lean into it. But I'd love to hear your experiences in working with Crepe de Chine or modifications on patterns. What helps you to create that garment and stay on track? Anything of that nature. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy a previous video I did all on my 2023 spring makes thus far. I'm gonna go ahead and add this into the collection. As always, thank you so much for watching and happy creating.